the AWS Financial Services Symposium, presented by The Cube. Good afternoon, nerd fam, and welcome back to our power-packed coverage here at AWS Financial Services Symposium. My name is Savannah Peterson here in New York City for theCUBE. Very excited for our next segment with my new friend, Frank. Frank, welcome to the stage. Thank you, Samantha. How are you today? I am awesome. I'm having Super. a great day. And, and I love when I was doing my homework on you before you walked up today, you said that you are an energetic leader, and uh, I can tell that that is very true. Super, super. You've been at Virtusa for a long time, a little while at least. Two years. Yeah, so tell us about the company, tell us about the evolution, and then we'll get into some of the products that you recently Sure, announced. sure. Well, today, Virtus is a global SI, really focused on engineering services. Mm -hmm. uh, we've, we're uh, across the globe, uh, 35,000 people operating in 50 different offices, so we have global reach. Financial services is one of our biggest sectors. We also work in healthcare, life sciences, telco, and, and uh, some of the other industries. But I think what's really special is this engineering platform and capability that we built yeah. is really surrounded by a keen eye for kind of design and end user experience, as well as a very deep domain understanding. So we're really focused around the business problems and outcomes in these industries. And it seems very uh, creative, I think, in how they think about these end-to-end -end solutions for our clients. Oh, that's awesome. So I, it, you seem like a great partner for AWS. How do you two pair together to help people with these transformations? Yeah, it's interesting. We were one of the early adopters. I think one of the things we make is uh, pretty smart bets around the future of where technology is. And as AWS was really launching their whole cloud services, we were one of the first really to partner with them. And in the early days, worked through some of the most complicated uh, migrations for application and data payloads. And this was back in the days when there wasn't a lot of infrastructure and best practices and guys. So we were, I would say, kind of a pioneering partner with them. And now we've, uh, you know, we've focused on, um, I think, creating a lot of centers of excellence in factories. So these are basically just proven tools and methods to really help accelerate that journey from on-prem into the cloud. And I, I, I see an increasing focus on uh, data payloads now and really as, as kind of the, uh, the foundational element of AI. Right, so it's, uh, it's yeah. been pretty exciting. It's, a, it's our largest hyperscaler uh, relationship and uh, you know, we've been great partners and we're very proud of the work we've done with them. Yeah, I can see why. Not surprising. You just brought up a buzzword, an acronym I haven't heard at all today, AI. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kidding. Are we uh, an AI show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, every show is an AI show now, yeah, I feel right. like, at this point, for but, sure. You guys just announced a new offering, Helio, in April. Tell me about that. Sure, sure. So what's funny is the, the market, it feels like we've been at this AI market now for over 20 years, right? Everybody's mm -hmm. claiming we have all these assets, all these experiences. I think we were very thoughtful coming out of the gate not to go in and make announcements and AI wash a bunch of the work we had done historically. So we spent time, I would say, in, in you know, 2023 was a, was a year of uh, learning and experimentation, right, with our clients. I think we had over 300 conversations, did about 60 proof of concepts, and uh, ended up with about nine production use cases, right? So not, not bad. Uh, but I think um, what we learned during the, during the process is, is um, you know, just a set of both internal processes we used, uh, you know, uh, tools that we developed, best practices, kind of the front-end advisory. And we put all of this in a package called Helio, which, which actually is uh, short for the sun, which is kind of a uh, an interesting thing in terms of helping our clients kind of see the light and the direction around where AI should be going. But we're still very much in the early innings of this. I think somebody today was speaking of the, the, the S-curve. And most people think because of this hype that we're like in that, you know, middle of that S-curve mm -hmm. and we're about to peak. And, you know, our belief is we're still very much at the bottom and, and we're just making that new leap to this new, new. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity ahead of us for sure in, in what this, uh, what this market's going to bring. And uh, I think Helio is an amazing framework to harness, you know, both not just Gen I, but the powers of an analytical AI in the full, what I, what I would say, what it takes to become an intelligent enterprise is really in the box there. So what is an intelligent enterprise? What does that mean? I like yeah. that phrase. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. So I think Listen, there's been a lot of uh, work, especially in FSI around automation, but I, I think the true orchestration um, of, of the complicated processes and the organizational functions, I think as you begin to tra traverse those and think about end-to-end -end, uh, efficiency and end-to-end -end automation, to me, that's when the 
uh, enterprise becomes more autonomous and more productive. So, so I, I think AI in the future really may become the, uh, the new operating system for enterprises, right? So all applications yeah. will now be built with kind of AI kind of built in as an infrastructure, right? And there's operating infrastructure. You know, I think there's work to be done with uh, safeguards, controls, you know, you know, policies, governance, and all of that, but uh, that'll mature over time. But I, so the intelligent enterprise in my mind is one that's really much more productive than it is today, much more real time in its kind of analytics and decision making, um, and really is thinking about their customers kind of in an end to end fashion. Absolutely. The, I, I love that. I'm going to steal that phrase from you. I'll give you credit. Okay. I'll just, always give you credit, yeah. Frank. But I like it a lot. It's, it's a good one. What are the steps? How, how do they get started on that journey? Because I we've talked to a lot of people in, in general consensus. I'm, I suspect you're seeing this as well. Com- companies are excited. They're also a little overwhelmed. There's a lot happening yeah. right now and it's moving faster than ever. So how do you get them started on that track? I imagine there's a bit of handholding. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I refer to a lot of uh, experimentation that went on last year and it's still going on. And I think um, this journey of what I call from education to research, proof of concept to, to, to uh, you know, production, I think one of the mistakes that was made is um, the, 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 the proof of concepts were not necessarily governed by the real business context of these use cases. And what that means is uh, they're, they're taking a lot longer to go from pilot into a production environment. Mm-hmm. So one of, one of the things we look to do in our advisory service is to create what we call a business canvas. And a business canvas is really a palette to really define what are the business outcomes we're looking, what is the technology, yeah. what is the data we need, what are all the process and compliance steps that are going to be needed to fully take this ideation to what we think about as realization of this idea. And that's not an easy process. And you know, this is not a flip of the switch. I think people um, are underestimating what that journey looks like. And um, you know, there's still some industry things we have to uh, that have to be answered around how our models trained. You know, how, right. how do we know that they're things, fair? Right? How do we know how, how do we, I'm not biased and all of these? And things. what does but, that even mean? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of layers to that. So, uh, but yeah, we, we feel like we're we're in Helio. We're providing this both advisory component, right, that helps people think about how to get to production, as well as the technology components about how do we build it, and then on that journey from a worker productivity, how do we do it in the most efficient way possible? What are you seeing? I know you touch a couple different industries, not just financial services. Sure. Are any of the verticals you're interacting with adopting faster than the others? Is it everybody all kind of running towards what we were kind of considering as a start line, really? Yeah, but yeah. yeah, in some ways, it's like one of these neck and neck, like, like yeah. the photo finish at the, uh, you know, Preakness or a horse race. But, um, you know, I, I think there's waves. So I think f- financial services tends to be out of the gate quick, but because they run into kind of uh, compliance and regulatory issues, it tends to be a slower machinery. So investing in tech very early on, mm-hmm. but then I think it takes a while to get out. I think some of the other industries, like I would say maybe media, yeah. uh, possibly telecommunications are, are uh, I think, moving faster, l- less regulated. Mm-hmm. Healthcare runs into the same uh, same issues, but all industries now, I think the tide is raising for all industries. So they're all in the, the same phase where they've done a fair amount of experimentation. They're starting to really define those uh, uh, use cases. Yeah, and those production use cases, you mentioned you you had nine use cases. that yeah, to production. Well, that was, Can you give us some samples from that? Yeah, so in the, um, you know, uh, a lot of shifting of, of applications, right? So when you think about in a large, um, uh, you know, investment bank that we work with, we took a lot of their uh, data payloads that were stored in on-prem, uh, about 44 Oracle databases, and they really wanted to now move that into an agile environment to enable AI. So we used our uh, data migration factory, which has a lot of proven templates to accelerate that movement. And then also, the, the back-end process around consistent, how do you know everything moved correctly? How the re- referential right. integrity, you know, how do you know that the data quality didn't get um, that messed trust up? Is no, the, the trust, right? So there's a lot of, uh, you know, scripts we also uh, uh, put in there. But, but the, the end result was really a significant cost savings, but really business agility right now, enabling mm-hmm. the organization to, to kind of manipulate their data train their own models very differently and really begin now to build those applications on top of this uh, data asset that they've amassed. Yeah, absolutely. These processes are not cheap. And I can imagine companies want to see value immediately. What are some of the places in which you're seeing specific value creation from these programs getting implemented that you're helping them out? Sure, sure. Um, You know, in the the second wave that I was referring to, 
I think things like customer experience, um, uh, you know, has a lot of opportunity. We heard today just around this orchestration of adjacencies, right? So, you know, I think Visa was talking about, um, you know, hey, we're more than just a payments company. We now have the intelligence to think about your end-to-end -end experience, right? From if you're buying, a, you know, a sports ticket, how do you think about the transportation? How do you think yeah. about, um, you know, the, 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 the what do you want to buy at the event? How do you think about the event? And then... Uh, obviously, how do you pay and procure the event? But this kind of end-to-end, -end, if you're in the market for, say, a, uh, a, a, a home loan, you know, what about helping you with realtor services, home inspection services, right? If you're buying an auto, right? So all of these kind of end-to-end journeys that can now get orchestrated from within, I think, is in this customer experience yeah. uh, umbrella. I think from, a, you know, origination and lending, mm -hmm. right, thinking differently about traditional underwriting rules to now, mm -hmm. I mean, Gen AI is perfectly uh, positioned to really look at a much wider, uh, you know, uh, document asset assets around individuals. And maybe that changes the way you think about your underwriting policies, which means, you know, maybe you're capturing some of that market that you're letting go to competition because of some, you know, historically um, conservative, you know, yeah. rules around this. So. You know, and then op operations in general, I, I, I think while RPA, robotic process automation, has been around a while in financial services, I think it was really doing basic remedial tasks in the back office. I don't think it was really orchestrating front, middle, and back office. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's where this point. intelligence around data and process can really uh, get those productivity gains that we're, that we're looking for. Right? Yeah. W which enables the workers at organizations to, to go on and do higher value tasks, which is a, this idea of like mm -hmm. how... It, powered by AI, not replaced by AI, right? hundred yeah. percent. As I always say, it's not going to take your job. It's just going to make it suck less. <laughs> We're just not going to have to do all the little, yeah, you know, the admin tasks or things that, that take up right. time. That's right. I and mean, I think about it even with our expense reports here on these trips. I'm always like, there is got to be a better way. There's certainly, there's, there's we certainly, should start that company. <laughs> we, we absolutely should. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> no, we, uh, I, I, I love that holistic health, though, of the customer experience is yeah. really what you're talking about. It's not just a right. single touch point. It's, and particularly on the lending, you, you brought up an outstanding point there. I mean, I am an entrepreneurial background and a business owner, and, and I am not the type of person the bank wants to lend money to. Ironically, when it comes yeah. to buying a house or doing something, because I don't know what traditional... In a traditional profile, you don't, exactly. you don't make don't, the cut. No, I don't make the cut. And it's a, it's such a... And I've had some interesting conversations with the bank about it, too, and, and none of them made me feel good. I can tell you those yeah. financial yeah. institutions do not still have... But, what, but well. yet your risk profile is probably no worse than the average person. 100%, yeah. That's, that's what we want to unlock, exactly, right? Yeah. Is that deep intelligence about you that right. we can really now... Uh, take advantage of. And that's market capture for many organizations. It is cool. I hadn't really thought about that as one of the avenues in which AI is going to help democratize, as we like to talk about a lot, you know, almost to nauseam. But it, it's really going to democratize access to, say, capital, for example. It's not just right. the tools itself. It's going to give that complete picture of, of someone's risk profile that's much more inclusive, perhaps, of a lot of other things. And illustrates their consistency. Maybe I can buy a house someday after all <laughs> as a result <laughs> of this. All right. One last question for you, Frank. You're a fabulous guest, and I suspect we'll have you on the show again. Love so to come. Let's say we're at this event a year from now. What do you hope to be able to say when we're back together then that you can't yet say today? Yeah, I think it's just really scale of these production use cases and really seeing some some more uh, elements of that intelligent enterprise coming together where you're where you're starting to see very specific use cases now that are coming. I think they're still very much in this pilot and proof of concept. So. Um, in, in a year from now, I think we'll just see a lot more outcomes around AI and, and the data, the assets that it's supporting. And now we're here for the outcomes. We're about making it real, and you're let's, one of the people doing do it, it, Frank. Thanks so much thanks for so being much. here with me. Yeah. And thank all of you thanks. for tuning in to our thank fantastic you. 15 segments here at AWS Financial Services Symposium in New York City. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching The Cube, the leading source for enterprise tech news.